Part 1 You will hear a radio interview about an upcoming fair. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Good afternoon and welcome to City Hour, the radio show that brings you all the latest information about events in and around our city. Today, we have with us Cynthia Smith, who is heading up this year's City Fair. Cynthia, would you start by giving us some of the basic information about the fair? Where will it take place this year? I'm glad you asked that question, because I know most people will be expecting the fair to be at the fairgrounds as usual, but we've had to change the location this year due to some construction work. You know, they're building the new high school in that neighbourhood and they've been using the fairgrounds as a place to store construction materials. So we've moved the fair to City Park, which I think is a wonderful location. Yes, that will be a great place for the fair. I understand that the fair begins on Friday morning with a special opening event. Actually, it won't begin until that evening, but you're right about the special event. Traditionally, we've begun with a parade, but this year our opening event will be a special dance performance. And the most exciting part is that the mayor will be one of the dancers. The mayor is a woman of many talents. Cynthia, could you tell our listeners about the price of admission? What will it cost to attend the fair? We're trying to keep the price down as much as possible. A three-day pass is just $25. Or you can buy a Saturday or Sunday only pass for $15. The opening event on Friday, the dance performance, doesn't cost anything to attend. And we're hoping a lot of people will come to watch that. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Could you tell us about some of the events planned for Saturday and Sunday, the main days of the fair? We have a lot of exciting things planned. There are a number of events, especially for children, including a clown show on Saturday afternoon. On Saturday evening, we've got an event that can be enjoyed by the whole family, a concert by the lake. I'm sure that will be a popular event. Is there anything special planned for Sunday? Yes, a really fun event. And we hope a lot of people will participate. There'll be a singing contest in the afternoon. It's open to everyone at no charge. It doesn't matter whether you're an experienced singer or not. If you've always dreamed of singing on stage, this is your chance. That sounds like a lot of fun. I think it will be. I'd also like your listeners to know that besides the special events I've mentioned, there will be things taking place all weekend. For example, at the food court, international food will be served. You'll be able to sample dishes from all around the world. There will also be special games for children at different locations around the fair. Will there be things people can buy, souvenirs, anything like that? We have a large area set aside where there will be crafts for sale. This will be an opportunity to buy many lovely handmade things and to get to know some of our local artists and craftspeople as well. It sounds like there will be a lot of fun for everyone at this year's fair. Thank you for sharing the information with us, Cynthia. Thank you for inviting me. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear two students talking about a school project. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Hi, Lynn. How's your project coming along? Oh, not very well. I've got all the information, but I can't seem to organise it into a presentation. Well, you'd better hurry. You only have one more week. Yes, that's OK. It's just that... Oh. Well, why don't you try your presentation on me? Maybe I can help. Oh, really? Great! OK, well, I've chosen solar power for my subject and I'm going to talk specifically about domestic water heating. You know, like the ones popular in America? I've got some facts here. Oh, that's good. But just start your presentation from the beginning. Oh, right. Well, he here we go then. There are many reasons why we should be looking elsewhere for energy sources. As most people are aware, fossil fuels and other such non-renewable sources are by definition finite, so something needs to be in operation soon. Currently, there are a number of alternative energy sources available which can, with a little preparation, be used to provide for a significant part of our domestic energy requirements. In this presentation, I am focusing on solar power and its application as a domestic water heater. As a renewable energy source, solar power is in many ways ideal. The amount of the sun's energy which reaches the earth every minute exceeds the energy that the global population consumes in a year. Although scientists argue that it is not finite, sunlight is certainly a long-lasting resource which is not depleted through use, and solar power converters use this energy without needing any complex moving parts. Once collected and stored, solar energy can be used for many purposes, but it is becoming increasingly popular as a domestic heating source. Generally, a building that is heated by solar power will have its water heated by solar power as well. And this has even worked in areas that are not exposed to long hours of direct sunlight, such as the United Kingdom, although not so well as in warmer climates. Why have you stopped? Well, that's all I've got so far. Oh, well. Start by talking about how effective it is. Oh, OK. Well, there are a number of factors that influence how efficient solar power can be. The first, obviously, is the amount of sunlight, and this is dependent on season, time of day and climate. Although the UK has something of a bad reputation for sunshine, it is actually quite productive during some parts of the year. Given a sufficient size of solar panel and water storage tank, solar power can provide all of our water heating requirements in June and July and even provide the majority until October. From October to the end of the year, this figure falls dramatically. December is the least productive, being able to supply less than 5% of the average household's hot water requirement. It is at this point that solar power needs to be supplemented with a more traditional form of heating. From January, solar power becomes more effective at a rate of about 20% per month, although this rise decelerates to around 18% by May. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Mm -hmm. 
now say something about this water heater. Do you have any information about that? Oh, yes, I've got an illustration of a water tank here. Well, that's good, but you'll have to describe it. Right. Well, the ideal water tank in the UK has a capacity of 45 to 50 litres, but must be at least 40 litres to be effective. The solar coil is put in the bottom of the tank to heat the water. Now remember that solar heated water will not get quite as hot as fossil fuel water heaters. The bottom half of the tank is normally 20 degrees, and this is why it is important not to have a tank that is too large, as that would take too much energy to heat. In this illustration, it rises to 40 degrees from halfway up. Don't forget that hot water rises, so the top third of the tank is the hottest, and reaches an average temperature of 65 degrees. And what's the second layer around the tank? Oh, that's insulation. Because the tank is often either outside or just under the roof, rigid foam is used as an insulation layer. It should be at least 80 millimetres thick all around. Well, that seems like a good presentation. All you need to do is to prepare some short notes and a larger illustration so you can use it as a demonstration and you'll be fine. Oh, you think so? Well, thanks very much for the help. Maybe I could do the same for you one day. Maybe. Anyway, I have to go. Good luck. Thanks. Bye. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. Making the decision to stop is just the first step. Yet if you follow these guidelines, no matter how tough it may be to begin with, rest assured. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Good afternoon. Welcome to Stop Smoking Now. You're all here today because you've decided to stop smoking. However, making the decision to stop is just the first step. Yet if you follow these guidelines, no matter how tough it may be to begin with, rest assured you will be on your way to becoming what you want to be, an ex-smoker. The first thing to remember is that there is not only one way. What I'll give you today are various methods you can choose from. They all work and they can all help. The first method I would recommend is based on something we all have, but in different degrees, namely willpower. Of course, just making the decision to stop is an enormous act of willpower alone. But what exactly does this mean? It means having a strong mind, waking up every morning and telling yourself that you will not have that cigarette, no matter how much you may want one. To do this successfully, you really have to be determined to stay focused. You need to be in the right frame of mind. But this isn't as easy as it may sound, and it may mean doing other things to take your mind off having that cigarette, particularly when the urge is strong. I found that different things can help you do this, like taking up a hobby, or having a smoking buddy, someone you can phone up when the going gets tough, a friend who can help you think about something else. Remember that each time you don't have a cigarette, you will feel better and stronger. Of course, this method does not work for everyone, but there are other ways to help keep you on track. Another way is to use smoking aids. There are many types, so find one that suits you best. Take, for example, nicotine patches. 
You put one on every day, and it gives you a controlled nicotine dose. Basically, you keep reducing the amount until your body stops craving nicotine. As your body gets used to less nicotine, you may experience withdrawal symptoms. Don't worry about feeling embarrassed; people will notice because many nicotine patches are see-through. So, where do you get them? Well, you can buy them from your local pharmacy or supermarket. You can also ask your GP for a prescription. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. Another method that is becoming more popular is alternative therapies. Giving up smoking is not only difficult for your body but also your mind, as the emotional stress can be really severe. One therapy that springs to mind is acupuncture. This can help you relax, calm you down, making you much more likely to want to give up. Acupuncture usually lasts between fifty to ninety minutes. As your body and mind become stronger, you should need fewer sessions. The good thing about acupuncture is that it takes harmful toxins caused by smoking out of your body, and I'm sure you'll all like this. It does not increase your appetite, so giving up smoking using this method means you won't put on weight. It can take as few as five acupuncture sessions to cure you, but of course this depends on the type of person you are. I suppose one of the biggest advantages of using this method is that there are almost no withdrawal symptoms because it works from the inside. What I mean by this is that acupuncture takes away your wanting to smoke, and this feeling, on top of the feeling of calmness, stays with you after the treatment is over. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which method you choose. What's important is that you make the decision and then stick to it no matter what. If you give up, think of the money you'll be saving. There is no better time to start than today. You can kick the habit for good. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a talk about the English policeman. As you listen, complete the notes below. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. The English policeman has several nicknames, but the most frequently used are Copper and Bobby. The first name comes from the verb to cop, which is also slang, meaning to take or to capture, and the second comes from the first name of Sir Robert Peel, the nineteenth-century politician who was the founder of the police force as we know it today. An early nickname for the policeman was Peeler, but this one has died out. Whatever we may call them, the general opinion of the police seems to be a favourable one, except, of course, among the criminal part of the community, where the police are given more derogatory nicknames, which originated in America, such as Fuzz or Pig.
Visitors to England seem nearly always to be very impressed by the English police. It has, in fact, become a standing joke that the visitor to Britain, when asked for his views of the country, will always say, at some point or other, "I think your policemen are wonderful." Well, the British Bobby may not always be wonderful, but he is usually a very friendly and helpful sort of character. A music hall song of some years ago was called. If you want to know the time, ask a policeman. Nowadays, most people own watches, but they still seem to find plenty of other questions to ask the policeman. In London, the policemen spend so much of their time directing visitors about the city that one wonders how they ever find time to do anything else. Two things are immediately noticeable to the stranger when he sees an English policeman for the first time. The first is that he does not carry a pistol, and the second is that he wears a very distinctive type of headgear, the policeman's helmet. His helmet, together with his height, enables an English policeman to be seen from a considerable distance. A fact that is not without its usefulness. From time to time, it is suggested that the policeman should be given a pistol, and that his helmet should be taken from him. But both these suggestions are resisted by the majority of the public. And the police themselves. However, the police have not resisted all changes. Radios, police cars, and even helicopters give them greater mobility now. The policeman's lot is not an enviable one, even in a country which prides itself on being reasonably law-abiding. But, on the whole, the English policeman fulfills his often thankless task with courtesy and good humour, and with an understanding of the fundamental fact. That the police of the country's servants, and not its masters. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So this lesson is for you. So are you ready? Here we go. So uh, the topic uh, of today is uh, talk about an interesting conversation. Who was the person? When and where did you have the conversation? And what was the conversation? So sometimes it is it's very nice question. Talk about an interesting conversation. But uh, for most of the students, ah, uh, ये difficult है कि वो उसको जो है one to two minutes तक वो बोल पाएं. It's difficult है. So if you have the same problem, this lesson is for you. So uh, please watch my full video. And uh, you won't have any kind of difficulties later on. you will be able to speak very effective english and you will be able to achieve your desired score or your score of uh, more than 8 minutes or perfect 9 so are you ready here we go so i have had several interesting conversation with my parents relatives and colleagues colleagues mean coworker means saath kaam karne wale but today i'd like to discuss an extremely interesting and fascinating chat i mean fascinating it mean very awesome a very interesting चैट चैट मीन कॉन्वर्सेशन मीन बातचीत आई हैड विद वन ऑफ माई फ्रेंड्स यानी मैंने जो मेरे फ्रेंड के साथ की थी एक्चुअली कपल ऑफ ईयर्स अगो वेरी नाइस फ्रेज यू कैन यूज इट अ कपल ऑफ ईयर्स मनो अगो मीन मीन दो तीन साल पहले दो तीन साल पहले मीन कपल ऑफ ईयर और लगभग दो साल पहले वेन आई वॉज स्टडिंग एट कॉलेज माई फ्रेंड नेम दिलबाग हु वॉज सो क्लोज टू मी आई मीन ही वॉज वेरी क्लोज टू मी दैट वी यूज टू शेयर आवर सीक्रेट विद ईच अदर ही हैड अ ग्रेट सेंस ऑफ ह्यूमर ग्रेट सेंस ऑफ ह्यूमर इट मीन वेरी नाइस फ्रेज अगेन I mean great sense of humor I mean uh, I mean humor uh, iska matlab jo hasne ki jo ek sense hoti hai common sense so he had a great common sense of uh, humor I mean hasne ki uh, and of course uh, uh, the most fun loving person with pure heart i have ever met throughout my life I mean he had a great sense of humor and of course the most fun loving person again very interesting I mean my friend was most fun loving very entertaining and with pure heart I mean uh, his heart was uh, pure I mean uh, I mean he had no ill will in his heart I mean koi jo hai usme ill will nahi thi koi dvesh nahi tha Uh, I have ever met throughout my life. Throughout my life means, I mean, मेरे पूरे जीवन में. He was full of anecdotes and interesting stories. Anecdotes also small interesting stories and the entertaining stories. Entertaining means uh, जो है वो बहुत मनोरंजन करने वाली stories. And the best thing about him was that uh, he was always ready to say something amusing, which made us laugh. Made us laugh means हमें हंसाना. So it's very important. Sometimes uh, uh, जो uh, 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 Hindi belt के जो students हैं, जो Hindi बोलते हैं, जिनकी जो uh, 
नेटिव uh, uh, जो लैंग्वेज है वो हिंदी है सो so वो नहीं जानते कि हंसाना मतलब इंग्लिश उसकी क्या होती है सो मेड असलाफ मीन हंसाना द वे ही कॉन्टॉटेड हिज फेस कॉन्टॉटेड मीन उसके फेस को जो है वो बनाना आई मीन यू कैन इमेजिन यू नो मिस्टर बीन मिस्टर बीन यदि आपने देखा तो उसके फेस को वो कैसे फेस बना बना के जो है ही इज अ वेरी गुड एट यू नो कॉन्टॉटिंग हिज फेस एंड मेकिंग पीपल लाफ सो कॉन्टॉटेड हिज फेस और आप उसका जो है एक वेरी फेमस सीरियल इन हिंदी ऑल्सो दैट इज तारक मेहता का उल्टा चश्मा सो यू कैन इमेजिन द कैरेक्टर ऑफ जेठालाल वो भी जो है कॉन्टॉट इज फेस एंड वी मेक ही मेक अस लाफ सो द वे ही कॉन्टॉट इज फेस बिफोर स्पीकिंग वो द मोस्ट सिग्निफिकेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक मीन उसकी जो क्वालिटी है वो और जो उसकी जो फीचर है जो खास बात थी मेरी फ्रेंड के अंदर ही पजेज मीन ही हैड मीन उसके अंदर जो थी एज एन एंटरटेनर मीन ही वॉज अ ग्रेट एंटरटेनर यानी मजाक करने वाला इवन वी गुड नॉट स्टॉप लाफिंग विद हिज रिपीटेड जॉक्स यानी रिपीटेड जॉक्स के साथ भी वी गुड नॉट स्टॉप लाफिंग मीन वो हमें बहुत हंसाता था हम अपने आप को हंसी हंसने से रोक नहीं पाते थे ही क्रैक विद स्क्रैक जॉक्स मीन जॉक मारना जॉक जो है मजाक करना ओके रिगार्डिंग द टाइम एंड प्लेस इट वॉज टू ओ क्लॉक एंड वी वर सिटिंग इन द कैंटीन विद फ्रेंड्स एंड दिपिंग टी सिपिंग टीम इन ड्रिंकिंग टी यानी चाय पीना इन दोज डेज वी यूज टू इंडल्ज इन जेंटल ह्यूमर इंडल्ज इन जेंटल ह्यूमर मीन अगेन वेरी इन इडियोमेटिक फ्रेज I mean, very ex- uh, good expression, very nice expression. So we used to indulge in gentle humor. Gentle humor, it means, I mean, I mean, ah, जो हम जो एक हंसी मजाक जो करते हैं आपस में. Yeah, exchange banter and silly means same thing, but different word. And uh, tell side splitting jokes means hilarious joke. Means synonyms word, but very nice. So how can I forget the day when he shared his experience of casualing a girl? Casualing means means patana, लड़की को पटाना. And then they got married. I would say it was one of the most amusing talks he had ever shared with us. Despite the fact that he was so funny, I mean, इसके बावजूद कि वो बहुत funny था मेरा जो friend था he was shy by nature. I mean, nature से वो shy it means I mean intimidated. अर्थात वो यानी मीन शर्मिला था Especially when he when he comes to talking with girls. I mean, he hesitated talking with girls. I mean, लड़कियों से बातचीत करने में उसे बहुत hesitation होती थी बहुत हिचकिचाता था I had never seen him talking with girls with a stretch of five years at college. I mean, continuous five years. I mean, लगातार पांच साल हम कॉलेज में पढ़े लेकिन मैंने उसको कभी I had never seen my friend to talk to. Girls. However, as he told us one day when he was at marriage party, he happened to see a gorgeous girl and fell in love. He happened to see him suddenly. Uh, he met a gorgeous girl, mean very beautiful girl, बहुत ही सुंदर लड़के से मिला and fell in love. Means उसे प्यार हो गया. It was the first time he wanted to talk with that girl. Uh, but because of being introvert, introvert mean mean जो बातें करने से hesitate करते हैं introvert. एक तो extrovert mean extrovert mean the person who loves talking to others. Introvert mean जो कि shy it means mean दूसरे से बात करने से हिचकिचाने वाला. He could not muster the courage again. Very important phrase. He could not muster the phrase mean courage mean mean उसका साहस नहीं होता था साहस नहीं जुटा पाता था हिम्मत नहीं होती थी उसकी to talk to her. He told us that it was uh, his love at first sight. I think you have heard about it. Expression very nice expression. Love at first sight mean पहली नजर में प्यार हो जाना and didn't want to miss the opportunity to say uh, talk to her to uh, say something uh, about his feeling to that girl. I mean uh, okay. I mean he uh, uh, didn't want to miss the opportunity to say uh, something about his feeling to that girl. Actually, the girl was with some other girls, and she was busy with the preparation of the function with them. Uh, suddenly, she turned around. She turned around. Means 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 she turned around. That's very nice expression. Please uh, note it down and uh, uh, speak again and again, revise again and again. Practice, please, and it is very nice expression. So uh, that's what he could do, or he could do that, and his happiness knew no bound. Meanwhile, he was very happy when the girl smiled back. He took more than two years to propose that girl, and finally they got, they got married. We burst into pulses of laughter several times while uh, hearing his love stories, ups and downs, uh, which ended uh, with uh, happy climax. We burst into a pulse of laughter several times. Burst into pulse of laughter. It means we were very happy when he told us his love story. He told us the ups and downs. And ended with happy climax. It means the climax was happy. It means the end of the story was happy. It means the end of the story was happy. It means the happy end. By and large, I'd like to say the conversation was not only the most amusing. But also full of suspense. We thoroughly enjoyed the tale. Thoroughly means uh, very much. We we extremely enjoyed the tale means story. And I'll never ever forget a great time we had together. So we had a great time together with that boy. So uh, I think uh, uh, this is a very very useful. And uh, you don't have a lack of ideas now. I mean I have given you a lot of ideas, and it this lesson would uh, this lesson of mine would be very very helpful uh, in your speaking. And you will get your desired score. So 
uh, that's the end of my speaking but uh, don't forget to subscribe our channel